Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to NDC 2021 and welcome to my talk, Clancy, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Mobile. And I'm going to talk about uh, .NET Everywhere with Maui. Um, I'll tell you a bit about why I'm, I'm doing this talk. Uh, I'm doing this talk because I think it's, it's a really, really exciting time to be a .NET developer. As a .NET developer now, well, with .NET 6 coming later this month and then Maui, which will actually be next year now, um, you can actually create a .NET application and you can write .NET code that just runs it anywhere. Uh, you can write, you know, code for the cloud, for mobile, for desktop, browser, anything. Um, at SSW, the company that I work for, uh, I often hear .NET, we're all full stack developers, you know, we do .NET, we do Angular, React, Blazor, um, and I often hear people say, oh, I don't do mobile. Um, and I think that's not true because we've had the ability to create mobile apps in .NET for a long time with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. Um, and with Maui, that gap is getting even smaller because Maui, .NET Maui is going to be a true .NET app building experience. And what I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to see today is that every .NET developer is a mobile developer and is a desktop developer and is a cloud developer. As a .NET developer, you can write any code that runs anywhere. So that's what that's what we're going to look at today, and that's what we're going to we're going to discover together. Um, I will start by telling you a bit about myself. Uh, well, actually, I'll I'll start by telling you a bit about myself. I'll do a quick introduction. Um, and then I'm going to look very quickly at, at the history of .NET and the history of, of Maui and how we got to where we are today. Um, and then we'll have a look at the architecture of .NET 6, more specifically uh, a Maui application. And then we'll have a look at a couple of demos. A little bit about me. My name is Matt. Uh, I work at SSW, as mentioned. Uh, I do web and mobile development in .NET, do a bit of Blazor. And for mobile and desktop, I do Xamarin, and I'm starting to do a bit of Maui now as well. And next year will be all Maui. Um, interesting thing about me, um, in case you can't tell, I'm a, a big Superman fan. Um, no, Superman doesn't feature in any of my demos today, but uh, I will fix that for next time for sure. Um, and interesting fact, I wrote my undergraduate dissertation on Superman. Um, happy to chat about that if anyone's interested. You can find me online on Twitter at Matt Goldman. I do have a sadly somewhat neglected blog at goforgoldman.com and you can find me on GitHub, Matt-Goldman. Uh, one last quick thing I'd like to tell you about before I, I dig in. Uh, SSW Rewards, this is a, an app that we created at SSW for NDC actually, it was a couple of years ago, it was for NDC 2019. Um, and this is a Xamarin app, it's in Xamarin Forms and over the next six to 12 months we'll actually Port this over to Maui, uh, but for now it's still Xamarin. Maui is in preview. We're going to talk about that a fair bit. But anyway, if you search for SSW Rewards on the Google Play Store or on the iOS App Store, um, or you can scan this QR code, it will take you straight there. Install this app. Um, any of the SSW guys that you see giving talks today should have a QR code for you at the end of their talk. I've got one at the end of this talk that will give you 500 points, and you can use those points to claim some cool swag like. Um, this uh, SSW Smart Key Cup and the Xiaomi Mi Band and going to draws to win bigger prizes like this Google Nest Max. Um, so yeah, grab the app and I'll give you some points for this talk at the end. So let's talk first of all, what is MAUI? What is .NET MAUI? Well, it, it, it's, MAUI stands for Multi-Platform App UI. Uh, for anyone that hasn't seen the Disney film Moana, this is also a character called Maui who appears in that film. Um, so I'll be kind of leaning on that theme a little bit throughout the talk. Um, but multi-platform app UI. So it's it's a new uh, workload in .NET and it's a new uh, approach for, for .NET developers to build UI apps. And if you think about um, what we build in .NET at the moment in .NET Core or, or just .NET, .NET 5, what we're actually building is command line applications. Even if it's a web server, it, it's still a command line application. It's just an executable that runs at the command line. That, of course, has changed now with Blazor. We can write Blazor apps and their browser apps. Um, but Maui is a, is, is, a, is a platform for writing UI apps. So you can write a Maui app, and that Maui app will run on desktop uh, or mobile uh, on, any, on any operating system, really. With some some caveats which again i'll cover a bit later on so that's what mal is uh, now i'm going to talk about the history a little bit i'm going to go through this quite quickly even though for me this is the, the most interesting part of the talk uh, i i know you, you guys are much more interested in seeing some code and some demos so i'll go through this quickly um but the the multi-platform cross-platform dream started in 1996 with java 
Um, and the reason this is important is because uh, Java was based on the philosophy of write once, run anywhere. And uh, before Java, uh, UI application developers would write their software to run against APIs that were provided by the operating system. So if you wanted to write a Windows app, you had to use Windows APIs. If you wanted to write a, a Mac OS app, um, you would write using the Mac APIs and so on for, for other platforms as well. Java came along and said, uh, don't do that. And sorry, by the way, this isn't just for UI. This is for, for anything, any application that you wanted to write for these platforms. Uh, you would have to use the APIs. You would, you would code against the APIs provided by the, the, the operating system. Java came along and said, don't do that. We're going to create a language, which they did called Java, but more importantly, a runtime. So when you're writing a Java application, you're writing uh, code against the Java APIs um, with the Java runtime that runs your application, not the operating system. And you can install that Java runtime on Mac OS, on Linux, on Windows, and you'd be able to write a Java application that you could write once and run anywhere. So Microsoft uh, wanted a piece of this action and they uh, dabbled with Java a little bit as well. Um, but what they came up with, um, which got released eventually in 2002, was the .NET framework. And by the way, this isn't a, a comprehensive history. I'm just, just calling out some highlights. Um, so the .NET framework was similar to Java in that you, you had languages that were developed for it that included C Sharp, uh, Visual Basic was ported to .NET. Um, yeah, we've had some other languages along the way as well, which I'm not gonna talk too much about. Um, but the point is you didn't write Windows applications anymore. You wrote .NET applications, .NET framework applications, and .NET framework provided a comprehensive set of APIs and a base class library that let you write applications against .NET, not against Windows. Um, that was 2002. Um, in 2004, Mono came along and Mono was uh, created by a couple of guys who at the time, I believe, were at Novell um, and uh, they created Mono. And Mono is an open source implementation of .NET. Uh, and so it's, an, it's a .NET compiler and runtime, which was originally made for Linux and it's now been ported to all kinds of platforms uh, and underpins many of the things that we use today, including Xamarin, um, Unity, uh, Blazor, and I'll talk a bit about, more about that later on. Uh, and Mono eventually uh, evolved via something called Mono Touch, which was an implementation for iOS, and Mono Droid, which was an implementation for Android into Xamarin. Um, in fact, Xamarin, Android, and Xamarin iOS are, are direct evolutions of, of Mono Touch and Mono Droid. Um, and what, what they were was specifically abstractions of the Android and iOS APIs in .NET. So you could write an Android application or an iOS application, but you didn't have to use Java or Kotlin for Android. You didn't have to use Swift or Objective-C for, for iOS. You could use C-sharp or, or .NET. Um, you're still writing iOS and Android applications. Um, this eventually evolved into Xamarin Forms, um, and Xamarin Forms let you write a UI as well. So you, you no longer had to write an iOS or an Android application. Um, you could just write Xamarin Forms app and it would run on those platforms. Again, with some caveats, and the experience wasn't 100% smooth. You still really needed to be an iOS developer or an Android developer, and you could just take that .NET abstraction uh, and do it. Um, moving ahead, 2014, uh, the .NET Foundation was created. So .NET is, is no longer just this framework and this API and this base class library. It's an open standard. So the .NET Foundation was created as a, as a uh, not-for-profit to oversee uh, .NET and the development of .NET as a standard, as a platform, as a set of languages, and as a set of related uh, libraries. Um, and as we've seen recently, that always works really smoothly with no problems whatsoever. Um, and it's all sunshine and a, and a fun ride for everyone. Um, the next big development in this journey was 2016, and this was .NET Core. So .NET Framework uh, had some limitations compared to Java, for example. Uh, one of those limitations is that it was Windows only. Um, so .NET Framework, you, you had to install it, but you could only install it on Windows, so you couldn't run uh, .NET apps on other platforms without using something like Mono. Um, .NET Core came along and .NET changed that, so dot, uh, and changed that. .NET Core is cross-platform. .NET Core runs on Windows, it runs on Linux, it runs on Mac OS, it runs in you know pretty much every cloud, uh, AWS, um, Azure, of course, and, and many other clouds as well. Um, and the other uh, cool thing about .NET Core is that it's a truly portable runtime. So you can actually ship .NET Core with your application uh, and you can have it just execute your application and run it without it. You know, you, you can run it anywhere. Um, that was a big step. Uh, another big step in 2016 was that my, uh, Xamarin was acquired by Microsoft. So Xamarin became a part of Microsoft in 2016. That's an important 
step on this journey. Um, and then the next exciting thing is uh, Blazor. So Blazor let you run uh, .NET code in the browser. And we've kind of had this before with Silverlight. Silverlight was awesome. Silverlight let you run WPF code in your browser. The problem with Silverlight was that it was a plugin and the world has moved on from executing code uh, in plugins and browser. And the same thing happened with Java. Uh, you have Java plugins that let you run Java applications in your browser, but we've moved on from plugins uh, and we've moved on to single page applications and frameworks like uh, you know, React and Angular, uh, as well as many others. Um, so Blazor is, is now uh, uh, via the magic of WebAssembly actually lets you execute your .NET code in a browser without a plugin. Um, so we can now write .NET uh, browser-based applications. That was 2018. Um, and then of course, the next big step was last year and this was .NET 5. So we got rid of the core. Um, we uh, you can see we've got the .NET bot as the mascot here. Um, but the real, the real important thing about .NET 5, which we will look at in a moment is, is that it's, it's the journey towards one .NET. So even with .NET core, there's still a little bit fragmentation in the ecosystem. We've got different different things that run and are developed and evolved independently. .NET 5 really started to bring that together. And of course, the big one for our story here is .NET MAUI. And .NET MAUI was originally uh, scheduled to ship with .NET 6 this month. Uh, unfortunately, it's not ready. Uh, and it's, it's really encouraging to see the team pushing back and saying, we're not going to ship this yet. It's not ready. So um, .NET uh, MAUI will be out next year. And we can see here that we've gone from this dream with Java to write once run anywhere to the reality of that with, with .NET MAUI and that's coming next year. So that in a nutshell is the history of how we got here. So you've heard me mention Xamarin a couple of times and some of you may know Xamarin. Um, I'd be interested to know how many of you are Xamarin developers and, and how many of you are experimenting with MAUI. Um, MAUI is, is something new. It, it, it's born out of the DNA of Xamarin um, but really, it's a new thing. It, it, it's as I said, it's it's really this opportunity for for .NET developers to embrace the fact that they can build UI applications, um, and that's really what Maui is. It, it's got some roots in Xamarin, but it's a new thing. And I'm going to talk about some of the differences here. Uh, one of them is the paradigm, okay? Uh, and Xamarin is very much a bottom-up paradigm. I spoke briefly about this before. What I mean by that is that Xamarin is born out of this idea that if you know how to create uh, an Android app and you or you know how to create an iOS app, you can actually put some abstractions on top of that and you can do that in .NET, still building an, an Android app, still building an iOS app, still have to know the Android APIs and uh, the iOS APIs, but you can abstract those out and use them in, in .NET. And it's bottom up, but you, you can build this UI layer across the top of it with Xamarin Forms, but it's still, it's still bottom up. With Maui, it's top down. And, and again, I'm, I'm talking about the paradigm here and, um, you know, the engineering behind it, 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 you know, obviously the differences are subtle, but it, it's the paradigm. And the idea with Maui is that you build a Maui app. You're not building a, a Windows app. You're not building a Mac OS app. You're not building, um, you know, an Android or an iOS app. What you're doing is you are building a, a Maui app and that Maui app can run anywhere. Uh, some of the architecture of how you built a Xamarin app with um, uh, with Xamarin, it was multiple projects. So you would have your your core shared code uh, a project in your solution, and that would include things like services, view models, any kind of logic, uh, and your UI as well in Xamarin Forms. But then you would have an iOS project, which is what you would choose as your startup project if you wanted to run on iOS or target iOS for build. The same thing for Android. With Maui. You've got a single project. It's just one project. There's some spaces in there where you can do any kind of iOS or Android or Windows or Mac specific logic that you want to, but it's all still in the same project and you just choose a build target. We'll have a look at how you do that a little, a little bit later on, but it's one project where everything's just in the one project. This makes things much easier. Uh, so Xamarin is mobile focused. So with Xamarin, you can build uh, applications for Windows. You can build applications for Mac, but, but at its heart, it's about building mobile apps for iOS and Android. Whereas with, with uh, Maui, as I said, it's just, it's Maui first. It's you build a Maui app and that Maui can be run on all these different platforms, but you're building, you're just building a UI application. Um, and that's, that's really, you know, what, what the difference is there. Um, with Xamarin, I mentioned earlier about the fragmentation in .NET and with .NET Core, how you had, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
yeah, the, the different parts of the .NET ecosystem that kind of evolved and were developed independently. Um, and, and that was the case with Xamarin. It, it was it was not part of, of .NET. It was it was an additional thing that you installed uh, and you could use to create uh, Xamarin applications. With Maui, Maui is a part of .NET, and we'll 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 see uh, a, a bit about what difference that makes and how that's cool. Um, but yeah, and, and I think this is for me. This is one of the major changes, and this is one of the the major cool uh, developments of of, of Maui. Um, the design pattern is is uh, well. So in Xamarin, uh, you would use the MVVM design pattern. So this is model view view model, uh, and this is a design pattern that was created for uh, WPF. And it has been brought forward into uh, into Xamarin as well. Now you can use uh, other uh, uh, design patterns like MVU, and you can do that in Maui as well. In Xamarin, it was it was community supported, community provided, and via a couple of a couple of open source libraries. Uh, in Maui, that's actually still the case. However, Maui is treating those as first class citizens, and you know, as as Maui develops, you know, we may see some convergence there. Uh, but the point is that the MVU is considered a first class citizen in Maui, just like MVVM is. In Xamarin, in Xamarin Forms version four, we got XAML Hot Reload. Uh, this really helped with the development cycle because it let you uh, it let you make changes to your UI while your app is running without having to stop and start and rebuild your app. Now in uh, Maui, we get XAML and .NET Hot Reload. And um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a, a, a nice part of, of, of the .NET Foundation is that there's no drama whatsoever. And I am still able to keep this in this slide and say that we are still getting hot, hot reload with .NET 6. Um, so that's that's good. Um, and it's important actually to point out that because it's part of .NET, um, uh, .NET hot reload isn't a feature of Maui, it's a feature of .NET 6. So that's something cool that's coming. And that's, uh, that's, that's it's just going to make so much of a difference to the development lifecycle. Um, still in preview, as I said, um, uh, this little purple exclamation mark here, by the way, is uh, something that I might show every now and then if there's something that's still in preview. So we're pointing out that, that as I said, Maui has been pushed back to next year now. Uh, so a lot of what we're seeing in Maui is, is in preview. And there's a lot of things that might change. There's a lot of things that don't work as smoothly as we'd like just yet. And as I said, I, th I think it's it's awesome that the team have made the decision to, to not ship something that they're not happy with. So that's really good. Um, tooling for Xamarin, we have Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac. That's first party tooling. You can build Xamarin apps with third party tools like uh, Rider, of course, as well. Um, but with Maui, first party tooling in increases massively. So, yeah, we're using Visual Studio still, Visual Studio for Mac. Um, the .NET CLI, because Maui is part of .NET, you can use the .NET CLI for Maui apps. Couldn't do that with Xamarin. And uh, that means that I can open a, a prompt and I can type .NET new Maui and it will spin me up a Maui app. Uh, can't do that with Xamarin. It's just that's just awesome. I'm really pleased about that. And of course, support for VS Code as well. Everyone's favorite uh, code editor. Um, uh, and Maui apps are faster and smaller. So so Xamarin Xamarin apps are always progressing and always getting better every iteration. Um, and that's true of Maui as well. Maui is the next evolution of Xamarin Forms. Um, and Maui, you know, the, the apps that you're building, the packages are smaller uh, and faster. In fact, there's a stated goal by the Maui team to have sub one second load times for your application. Um, and in fact, I think they're already there with that as well. So that's really cool as well. And um, VS Code, still experimental support for, for Maui. Um, it's still in preview. So that's still something that's being worked on. And um, if you are interested in playing with Maui, Go ahead, it's awesome. I've been really enjoying it, as I said, but just be aware that um, there are some bumps to iron out at the moment. Um, so, I have lost control here. Oh, there we go. Oops. Okay, so I spoke about the journey of getting to 1.NET, and this is a slide that Microsoft showed with .NET 5 last year. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen this, uh, and this is, you know, a step in that journey towards providing a unified single one .NET platform. Um, as I mentioned before, .NET 5 or .NET Core 3, we had a little bit of fragmentation and now this is all being unified. So now you've got the .NET standard, um, which, it, which is, uh, it, it's a standard um, and it's the standard that, that .NET implementations are created against. And you have desktop uh, applications with WPF Windows Form and, and UWP, WinUI, um, web applications with ASP.NET, Cloud with Azure, uh, mobile and gaming with Unity, both of which run on uh, Mono as the, the implementation of .NET, 
we'll look at, uh, more at that in the next slide. IoT, of course, with ARM um, and AI, and um, all of this running on the .NET standard, and all of this supported by this common tooling set, which is the Visual Studio, uh, VS for Mac, VS Code, and CLI. Um, and, and that was a step in the right direction. With .NET 6, we are, uh, we are actually achieving this, this full unity of the whole .NET platform. That's really cool. Um, so I want to have a look at how this works for a MAUI app. So I mentioned that the paradigm with MAUI is top down. And this, this diagram here, which is also from Microsoft, explains how that works. Um, I know there's a bit much on screen. I'm just going to talk through it step by step and explain what these numbers mean. Um, and then hopefully this will make sense. So um, let's ignore everything from that big purple .NET 6 BCL down for now. Let's look at one, two, and three. So to create a MAUI app, you write your code. That's your app code. So you write your code and you write your code against .NET MAUI. .NET MAUI is the API that you use. So you create your UI and your logic against .NET MAUI. However, if you want to write Android specific code, you can do that as well. Now the example here with two is and three, in fact, is just for Android, but but the same is true of all these other platforms. So those numbers could could move across to iOS, Mac, and WinUI just as easily. Um, but you write your you write your app and you write platform specific code if you want to. And then step three, Maui takes care of uh, translating your code, compiling your code down into the platform implementation. So whereas um, with Xamarin, it was bottom up. So you had .NET for Android, which was where it was started. And then you, you, you know, you piled some stuff on top of it. Same with iOS, Mac, WinUI. With Maui, it's the other way around. You know, Microsoft are, are creating this API for developers, .NET developers to build UI applications. And then they're, they're providing the infrastructure and implementation underneath to run it. So, you know, you write your, you write your Maui app and Maui takes care of it. When you want to run it on Android, it gives you an Android app using .NET for Android. When you want an iOS app, it gives you an iOS app using .NET for iOS. Same with Mac, same with Windows, uh, WinUI, Windows. Now, all of these sit on top of the base class library, so you get the whole of .NET. So if you want to build these applications for Windows, for Mac, for, for iOS, Android, you can do them and you can, you can use .NET and you can use all of your favorite um, uh, all of your favorite primitives, everything you like from the base class library. You've got NuGet, so you can bring in all of your favorite all of your favorite packages as well. Then underneath that, the Mono runtime will run that application for you on Android, on iOS, or on Mac OS, and the WinRT will run it on Windows for you. But all of this is engineering under the hood. The point is for you as a developer, you build a Maui app, and and all of this is taken care of for you. Like I said, top down, um, and and I think that. Um, it sounds like a subtle distinction, but the fact that this is this is the paradigm and this is the way the team are thinking about it makes a, a real big difference to, to the developer experience for Amalia. So I think that's really cool. Um, so let's have a look at what the differences look like. Um, so, so for those of you that have never seen a Xamarin app before, this is what one looks like on the left, um, and this is what the new ways of doing it like on the right. So the first thing that you can see is in the uh, Xamarin app, we've got our core a core app project. So we've got the Xamarin Blank app. And in there, we've got models, view models, services, and views. Um, and then we've got our platform projects as well. So we've got an Android project, and we've got an iOS project. Um, so if you want to run on Android, you can see here in this example, the Android app has been set as startup project. So when I run this, it's going to run on Android. I have to change it to iOS, so on and so forth. Uh, we can also see that um, on the Maui side, that has changed and we have got just one app, one Maui app. Um, and where before we've got some platform specifics, on the left you can see an Android, I've highlighted main activity. As an Android developer, main activity is the entry point to your application. Um, and as an iOS developer, app delegate is the entry point to your application. Um, those still exist, so if you do need to tweak them uh, in Maui, you can. But they're still in the same project and they're in platform specific folders where those things live. Um, so you can, if you need to customize those, you can, but you can actually ignore that whole platforms folder and never look at it if you want to. Um, your entry point for a Maui application is this Maui program.cs. So you can see here, if you look on the left, you don't see anything like that. Now, as a Xamarin developer, your entry point is actually the app.xaml, or more importantly, the code behind the app.xaml.cs. Uh, um, which as a .NET developer, you, you might not be familiar with. Maui program is just like your program.cs, a little bit of startup thrown in there as well, but, but this is, it, it, it's become a much more .NET experience. 
So this is what a Maui program looks like. Um, so from that Maui blank app example, uh, and as I said, you can see that we've got our, our entry point there where we're using the same host builder pattern that you see in .NET, uh, where we're actually building up our app and then we're returning it. Um, and, you know, in here, we've just got the use Maui app and we've got configure fonts, but you can uh, add services here as well if, you, if you're using DI. And um, so it, it's become a much more .NET experience. It's a, it's a .NET developer first experience rather than a, uh, an iOS or Android developer first experience. So that's really cool, I, I think. And I think this is gonna, this is gonna change the game for, for .NET devs that wanna build UIs. So demo, let's have a quick, let's have a look at a quick demo. Um, I have got a, a demo at running that you are welcome to join in with this demo if you want. Uh, it's called Maui Chat. So you can go to HTTPS, uh, maui-chat.azurewebsites.net. You can scan that QR code, and that will get you there as well. Let's have a look at what this looks like. So this is Maui chat. So I am going to just send a message here. Hello, MDC. Uh, and if anyone wants to join in, you can, you're welcome to. Um, so this is uh, a Blazor application. So this is running in Blazor um, with a .NET core backend, um, which I'll show you. Let's have a quick look. So this is the wrong. So you can see here that I've got my uh, Maui chat server. Let me just zoom in a bit there for you. Um, so you can see I've got Maui chat server. Uh, this is my back end. It's a, it's a .NET web app running in Azure. I'm actually using uh, a SignalR hub here. Um, so I've got, it's called chat hub. Um, I also have my Maui chat dot client. Um, that's, oops, that's this one here. Um, and the Maui chat client is the Blazor application. You may have also spotted that I've got this Maui chat shared. Um, now, what's in here is my chat message. This is a really simple example. So um, just for demonstration purposes, in the real world, you might not want to share um, such a simple shared library with just one type in it. But like I said, it's for, it's for, it's for demonstration purposes. And my, my Maui server application has a dependency on that project, um, but my client does as well. So this is my Blazor app. Um, and this is, this is also using that shared type library. Um, so that is the, uh, the, the Blazor application that's running there in the back end. But we also have uh, a Maui app. Um, so uh, Maui, back. and this is running on uh, Windows. Uh, and we also have it running on Android. I've just waited. Let's see how long this takes. Actually, I did say sub one second. That was pretty quick. So I'm just going to go Matt Android. Hello. Okay, cool. So we can see here that we have got uh, an application here running in Azure, running in the browser, running on Android, running on Windows, and it's all using the shared code base. Let's have a look at the Maui app. Um, so I can probably stop that now. Um, uh, let's have a look. So we can see here that uh, I've got this shared project. This is the same shared project that you saw in the Blazor backend uh, and .NET backend solution. I've added it to this solution. The Maui project isn't a separate solution, but I've added it to this solution as well so that it can be a dependency here. Uh, and we've got my, my Maui program, um, uh, which I showed you before. This is the Maui program. And from here, this bootstraps my app class. Um, which is here, and my app class shows a main page. My main page is a XAML layout. So for those of you that haven't seen how you design UIs in, in a Xamarin app or in Maui app, you use this, this language called XAML. And so for anyone that's ever done any web design, this should be familiar to you. It's, it, we've got slightly different element tags, but essentially this is a, a, an XML-based markup language that you can use for building UIs. And, and you know, same with Blazor or Razor, similar concept with the code behind. This is a, a real comfortable place for .NET developers to be. Now, if you don't like this, you can actually create your code declaratively, uh, uh, your UI declaratively in code as well. So you can just write all your UI in C Sharp as well. Um, for me, I, I like the separation of UI and the logic. So I like to, I like to use XAML for, me, for my UIs. Like I said, very comfortable, very familiar. I'm not gonna describe in great detail what we're seeing here. Um, but we're seeing, you know, I've got some view models using the MVVM pattern here, um, and I, I'm using SignalR. Like I said, I'm using the same libraries that you might use 
anywhere else. Um, yeah, I'm using, you can see here, I'm using SignalR, um, and this is how I'm communicating with my Blazor backend. Um, so that's really cool. I've now got an application, as I said, that I have created in .NET, and I've written .NET code, and that .NET code is running on, on uh, in my browser, in Blazor, and it's running on my mobile device. Now, I did mention that um, Maui is in preview. So you can see here that, um, you know, the, the mobile app, it doesn't quite look right. Um, it's not quite there yet. So there's some things that need to be done in, in, in Maui for me to really deliver that cool experience that looks the same across all of them. So uh, we're not there yet. We're getting there. Um, but you know what? In the meantime, wouldn't it be cool if I could use this UI code here that I've built in Blazor and use that in a Maui app? Well, you can. Um, so I may be using the wrong instance here. Let's have a look. Maybe I'm using the right one. Yeah, so it's the same one, but uh, and it's also not looking quite right. So I've not done something right here. But either way, the point is that this is actually a Blazor app. Let me see if I can uh, open that for you. Um, open here somewhere. Um, let's do this. Uh, so the, the point is that I've got a Blazor app, and that Blazor app, uh, where are we? Blazor. That Blazor app, I've written my UI for my web in Blazor, and I've now reused it in Maui as well. So what you can do in Maui is you can you can write a Blazor application that runs natively as a binary executable on your platform of choice, whether that's iOS, Android, um, or or Windows or Mac OS or whatever. Um, so you may have noticed that I have here this uh, Maui chat dot razor. Um, so this is a razor class library. If I go back to my backend solution, you can see that uh, that's in here. And I have in here again. It's a simple scenario just for demonstration. Um, but I've got a uh, message list dot, dot razor. So I've got, uh, this is how the messages are actually rendered on screen. I'm consuming that in my Blazor app and I'm consuming it in my Maui app as well. Um, so let's have a look at what this Maui app looks like. Well, what it looks like is a Maui app. So you've got your, your WW root, your shared, these are, if you're building, uh, sorry, Blazor app. If you're building Blazor apps, this is, this is, you know, very familiar. This is just what Blazor looks like. The difference here is that the Maui program still bootstraps the app, um, but the main page, uh, the main page shows this Blazor web view. Um, so you can run your Blazor applications natively as a binary executable on your device, and they're rendered for you here in this view. Now, you might be thinking, that's cool. How is that different to something like Electron? How is that cool different to, um, you know, just using a, a web wrapper? The difference is that your UI in a Maui Blazor app is, uh, is, is, is rendered in a web view. But everything else is running uh, on the platform natively using .NET code. It's not your code isn't running in that web view unless it's part of that UI page. Everything else runs in the background, so you have true multi-threading um, and a lot of other benefits like that. So this is a really cool way of building apps as well. Blazor Maui um, is still experimental. Um, like I said, many of these things are in preview, um, but it's there, and we'll see where this goes. And we may see we may see um, um, Blazor and Maui converge more in the future. Um, uh, Microsoft are a bit tight-lipped about that at the moment, but there's certainly a lot of discussion around it in the community. So I, I personally think that's really cool. So um, let's have a recap of that demo. So I've got a video here, um, which I'll just let play while I talk over it. Um, like I said, Maui is in preview, so I wasn't sure whether this was going to work at all. So uh, I took this video of everything working. Um, you can see in the middle there my, my Maui Blazor sample working um better than it should have uh, same on the, the mobile device there it's not quite running that well now um i'll have to fix that up the maui the maui previews are constantly changing so my my demos don't necessarily keep up with those changes um but i think that's really cool uh, you know we've got a shared .NET code base that we're just running everywhere we've got it running in the cloud it's running in azure in the background doing the signal r hub we've got it running in our browser doing the ui we've got it running on our mobile devices running the ui as well so that's really cool. So we've got here our Azure App Chat service, as I said, SignalR running in Azure, um, and that is communicating with our Blazor web app, which is also communicating back with it. 
which is also communicating with our Maui app, whether that's our, our Maui XAML app or our Maui Blazor app. Um, and they're all using that same shared.NET code base. So, as I said, it's a simple example just for demonstration purposes here. We've got a Razor class library with very little in it, but it's shared. If I was building a, a full stack enterprise application, uh, I've got the shared uh, library there as well. All of these, all of this code, all of these uh, types, all of my logic, all shared everywhere. .NET code just running everywhere from one shared code base. Um, that's just cool. Like I say, exciting time to be a .NET developer. So um, that was the Maui chat app. I've got a link there, by the way, to uh, our rule on architecture diagrams in case anyone was interested, which I've kind of followed here. It's a cool way to do architecture diagrams. So that was Maui chat. Uh, I would like to show you guys another demo now. Um, and this is something that is a work in progress. Um, it doesn't work yet. Um, some of it does, which I'll show you. Um, and this is called DevHops, okay? So DevHops is a top secret project at SSW. Um, it's not that secret anymore. This came out of uh, a, um, a retreat, uh, sorry, brainstorming session that we had a couple of years ago when we, we were coming up with ideas internally as a company of, of, of what we can do around certain things. And this idea came up as, of could we brew better beer through our dev skills? One of the things I didn't mention is that, that I'm a, an avid home brewer, so I really like home brewing. Um, so I've got this, this is running on Azure. Um, this is uh, uh, called DevHops. And uh, the idea here is that I've got a, a web browser uh, app running in Blazor, and I can come in here and I can say, right, I am going to add a recipe to my recipe database for my brews. So I'm going here and I can say, uh, the recipe is going to be called MDC IPA, um, and I can choose my style. Uh, I want an IPA. Um, so there we go. We've got this is what an IPA is. Um, in fact, I might want a stout. Let's make it an NDC stout. So I'll just change that. Stout. Let's have an NDC stout. There we go. So we've got an NDC stout. I can add some notes here and I can add some ingredients like um, uh, what am I going to use? I'm going to use, I wouldn't use this, but this is a grain uh, crystal and, you know, and I can add myself in. I can add this recipe. So I've now got a recipe. Now that's that's great, right? But but I don't have this browser and this desktop experience with me when I'm out in the brew shed. You know, I've got my phone, so I want something that runs on mobile where I can communicate with this as well. So let's just have a look at it. Do you know what? I'm going to bring this across into this screen here to make this make a bit more sense. Uh, let's have a look at what, it, what, what we've got on mobile here. So I have here my DevHops app, which will hopefully start up in less than a second. Cool. Okay, cool. So you can see here that when I'm on my phone, I'm out in the brew shed, I can pull up the, the DevHops app and I can add uh, a batch. Um, so I can say, right, I've got my recipe. I can come in here and I can find my recipe and I can, I can add my batch while I'm, while I'm uh, on mobile out in the brew shed. So that's really cool. Let's have a look at how it works. So in the back end here, this is, um, so what I've done here is I've taken an out of the box uh, .NET Blazor uh, application, hosted Blazor. Um, so .NET WASM WebAssembly hosted. So it gives you the Blazor app and a back end. So I've done that and I've just refactored the back end a bit to make it uh, aligned with Jason Taylor's uh, clean architecture. Um, he's just done a two day workshop on it at NDC. So hopefully some of you guys attended that and enjoyed it. It's really cool. Um, you should definitely check out his videos online if you haven't seen them already. Um, so, yeah, this is using Jason's clean architecture and what you can see that I've got here is my web API, my API, which is in, in the clean architecture template. It's called web API. Um, I've got the application layer. Uh, I've got my domain. Uh, I've got my infrastructure and I've got instead of the, the Angular, I've got a Blazor project and then I've got this client um, and this client is using an, an auto generated NSWAG uh, uh, client. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into detail in this, but, you know, you can see it's your standard I've got controllers and I'm using uh, CQRS and Mediator, and I've got my, my commands and queries in my application layer here. Um, and as I said, I've got the Blazor app. The Blazor app has a dependency on that shared project uh, and on the client project, sorry, on the domain. So it's using the stack sharing the domain models and the client project to communicate with the back end. And then I've got this client as well. And if we have a look at um, the Maui side, in fact, let's have a look at how that client gets to Maui. So if we have a look at the repo here, so this is all on GitHub. So this is the repo, uh, it's, just, it's called Cloudy Mobile. I'll probably rename it DevHops. 
Um, but this is on GitHub. On my GitHub, you can see this repo. Um, I will be progressing this and developing this, and, and this will hopefully get to the stage where it's uh, it's um, it, it's fully running. And I'll talk a bit more about that in, in a bit. Um, uh, but yeah, this is this is the the cloudy mobile uh, uh, repo, and in here I've got the, all the the source code for the back end, the API, the Blazor, and the, the Maui. But what's really interesting about this, I think, is that if you have a look over here in my GitHub Actions. Uh, I've got my Azure App Service action, and what this does is when I when I merge uh, into main, um, this automatically kicks off as you would expect, and this then deploys my solution, my full stack backend solution with my Blazor app and my API deploys it off to Azure. But then I've got this other one here, this this uh, NuGet release, and what this does is this takes this client project here, uh, which contains an auto generated NSWAG API client, and publishes it to a NuGet feed. Uh, on GitHub, and that means that when I come and build my Maui app, what I can do is I can use, uh, I can consume that client from NuGet right here. So again, a simple scenario for, for demonstration purposes. You might not want to do this, but if you do, if you've got an internal NuGet feed, and um, this is a great way to share that logic between all of your .NET applications in your stack, from your Maui to your Blazor, or just sharing that same code. I just think that's really awesome. So let's have a look at the anatomy of this app a little bit. If I go into my Maui program here, um, you can see that we've got the same stuff that we saw earlier, but you'll also see that I'm registering some services here. So I'm, I'm registering some services like an auth service, uh, a retry handler, uh, a recipe service to communicate with the recipes API in the back end, a batch service for, for creating batches, and there'll be more as this grows. Then I've got my view models and my pages. And the reason that, that I'm injecting all these is because I'm I'm using this page resolver. So page resolver is another project of mine. This is also on on GitHub um, and it's on NuGet. So you can in, in fact it's on uh, on NuGet. It's called Goldie uh, Goldie.MauiPlugins.PageResolver, um, but the namespace is Maui.Plugins.PageResolver. So you can use this if you want. I don't know how long this is going to be necessary. The DI story might not necessarily be complete with with uh, Maui just yet. But what's interesting about this is that you have you have this, and and I mentioned earlier that as a .NET developer, you've got the familiar uh, .NET um, service collection, and, and and you know you've got your familiar .NET DI that you can just use. You didn't have that with Xamarin, so with Xamarin you would have to use a, a third party container like uh, uh, you know Tiny IOC or Unity or whatever, um, or you would have to use a, an MVVM. Uh, platform that had one built in. There are some really popular MVVM platforms for uh, Xamarin, and most of those are being ported across to Maui. Um, so you can still use those. If you don't want to use those, you can use my page resolver if you like. Um, and what that does is that lets you, um, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it does in a moment. But we can see here that we're bootstrapping our, our Maui app. And in our Maui app, um, we can see that what I've actually done is I've injected the main page here. Um, whereas if you looked at the previous samples, I was newing that up. So because I've registered it here in my in my service collection, I can just inject it here, um, and that means that any dependencies that that main page has, um, like my main view model, because that's registered here as well, um, just here. And in fact, any dependencies in the in the view model, uh, like this auth service, they're also uh, registered here as well. So all of that is getting injected. Um, and and that all just that all just works without you know third party solutions or third party uh, DI containers or resolvers or any of that. Um, what my page resolver does, in case you're interested, I'll just show you quickly. Um, it lets you uh, new up a page, well call up a resolve page by using this command here, uh, using this code here. So I can go uh, navigation .push async. Uh, with your page passed as a type parameter. So this is an extension method for the for the uh, navigation and it lets you pass in your page as a type parameter, resolves it and gives you the fully resolved page with um, all your view models and all your dependencies and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's really cool. Um, I think that, um, you know, what we've seen here is that we've got a .NET application that's running in, in the cloud here um, and it's running in the cloud using .NET code and it's running on my mobile device using .NET code. I can run it on Windows as well and I will in a second because I want to show you something cool about that. And it's all just using this shared code. It's all just using this .NET code that, that runs everywhere. But like I said, that's not that's not all there is to it. So let's have a look at Windows, right? Um, because I think this is another a cool thing that you can you can do. 
um, whilst I'm waiting for this to start up, I'll show you the code. So what I'm doing here in my view model, um, so you can see here that, um, I'll come back to this in one second. I wanna show you this in the view model first. Um, so in the view model, you can see that in my constructor, I have got a, uh, a little bit of logic here that says, what is my device idiom? Um, and if my device idiom is a phone, um, then set my is keg visible to false, otherwise set it to true. And if we just have a look here, you can see that I have got add batch, view recipes and styles, add a batch sample. On Windows, I've got the same thing, but I've got view kegs and locations as well. So this is the same app. This is exactly the same app, exactly the same code, but I can control the experience that my user gets depending on what platform they're on. So if I'm on, if I'm on, well, this is Windows, but this would be a tablet. But you know, if I if I'm on a tablet, I you know I can see a summary of my keg as well. So I can see here that um, I've got a keg in the Newcastle the SSW Newcastle kitchen bar, um, and I can see that it's currently got 12 liters left in it, 63%, um, and it's running at, at two degrees, which is all all good as well. Uh, and that is just exactly the same app, exactly the same code, but I can control that experience depending on on what platform you're on, and I think that's really cool. Um, and I want to show you uh, how you can take that a step further. So, as I said here, I'm using this device logic, uh, this device info logic. This comes from a library called Essentials. Um, Essentials, by the way, was also with Xamarin. It's a third party, like, well, it's not a third party library, but it's a, it's an external library, external to, to Xamarin that gives you access to common device shared functionality. Things like encryption, location services, making calls, sending messages, all of that stuff that, that's common across every platform. Um, and this is now part of Maui, so it's 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 part of Maui, which is really cool. Um, so I'm using that here to determine whether I'm on a phone or not. If I'm on desktop or if I'm on a tablet, I'm going to show this. Um, but if I'm on a phone, I don't want to, right? So I'm using this logic here. You can take it a step further, and I'm going to show you this um, really cool sample app here called Weather 21. So Weather 21, you can see it on GitHub. This is not mine. This is made by uh, David Ortenau. David Ortenau from Microsoft is the principal program manager for Maui, and he has created this, this Weather 21 sample app. You can see here he's got screenshots of it running on Windows, on Android, on Mac OS, and on iOS. By the way, my samples run on uh, iOS and Mac OS, of course, as well. I'm just presenting from Windows today. Um, but what I want to show you is, is this. If we have a look at um, David's code here, uh, and we go into his Maui program, uh, what you can see is that he is using here a compiler directive. Um, and what he's doing with this specifically is that he has got a service called uh, iTrace service. In fact, don't worry about this one so much. This is the bit that's important here. Um, he's got a, a, an abstraction called iTrace service and an abstraction called iNotification service. If he's running on Windows, he wants to uh, register this implementation for the trace service, this implementation for the notification service. If he's on Mac, he wants to register this implementation for the trace service and this implementation for the notification service. If he is on uh, another platform, he doesn't want to register an implementation of that service at all because they're not they don't make sense. A trace service doesn't make sense. Um, but as you can see, rather than using logic at runtime to determine what platform you're on, he's using a compiler directive here. The reason that I think that's interesting is that uh, I have a real world scenario where this is this is actually really useful. That real world scenario is um, that I um, have an app that I built for a client and it's a, it's a secure digital note taking application. Um, and we have uh, a mobile app that's built with Xamarin and we have a web app that's built with React. Um, and we have a desktop app, which is uh, currently, uh, it's a, a wrapped browser instance of that React app. So we could actually rebuild that whole thing, the whole stack in .NET. Um, but what's really cool about this is that if I were to make the whole app in Maui, I could use compiler directives to make sure that functionality that should only exist in the in the desktop app, and there is functionality that should only exist in desktop, like certain um, search and export features that should never be in the mobile app. I don't even have to worry about the security of making sure I'm locking them down. Um, with device idiom logic, using compiler directives, they'll never be in there in the first place. Um, so I think that's really cool as well. Um, there's one last thing that I want to show you. One last thing that I want to show you, um, and that is this. I said .NET everywhere, <clears throat> and I meant everywhere, right? So at the moment, we've got it running in tablets, desktops, browsers in the cloud. This is going to run in my keg as well. So this is a Raspberry Pi, and attached to it is what's called a Hall flow sensor. Um, 
it's physically wired up that I haven't wired it up to my back end yet. But the idea is that this will sit in my beer flow line and I'll be able to track in real time how much uh, beer is being consumed. And I'll be able to update this dynamically using a callback from my uh, Raspberry Pi running in my keg. So that that is just just awesome. And if you want to know how I'm doing that, by the way, um, there is a repo on Microsoft's GitHub called Windows IoT Core Samples, and they have a sample in there called Flow Volume. This is basically exactly what I just showed you. Uh, that's it's called a whole flow sensor, um, which is what I've got running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, you can see how they've wired up here, and they've got code here to run it. Um, because it is a Windows 10 IoT Core app, it has a UI, a XAML defined UI, by the way, and you can see this this uh, this pin on this gauge spin round as as flow starts to go through the sensor. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to run it just uh, on a Linux distro uh, on my Raspberry Pi. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is using the GPIO namespace, GPIO API. So GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output, and that's the pins that you see here on the Raspberry Pi. And that, that's not just in IO, uh, IoT Core. That's, in fact, uh, system.gpio. So you could use that anywhere. So that's how I'm going to do it. And, and as I said, that, that's a, a full stack solution running you know, .NET Core in my, uh, sorry, .NET 6 running in Azure, and um, .NET running in the browser with Blazor, .NET running on my mobile device, .NET running in my keg. It's just .NET everywhere. Uh, like I said, just such an exciting time to be a .NET developer. So let's have a quick recap. So, oh, you can see here, <laughs> you can see here some uh, slightly uh, strange looking earlier versions of this app. Um, I'm, as I said, updating it as I go constantly because .NET is still in preview. It's changing all the time. Uh, all the time. Uh, once we get out of preview, some of this stuff will be locked in and, and will start to you know progress rather than evolve and change so much. Um, but I want to have a quick chat about what we just saw because I just think it's really cool. So we have got my API and my Blazor code that's written in .NET 6. Um, I can commit that code uh, to GitHub and I have a GitHub action that then deploys that to Azure. So now I've got my .NET code running in Azure and then in your browser when you go to my website. But I've also got a GitHub action that publishes a new Git package, which is shared and a shared .NET package, which I then consume in my Maui app. And then I run that app on Android, iOS, Mac OS and Windows. And there's a piece missing from this diagram here, which is the, the Raspberry Pi. I should add that. Like I said, you've got one shared .NET code base. It's running uh, in your browser, in your keg, running IoT devices in the cloud, in your pocket. Just you can just like, as I said, as a .NET developer, there's never been a more exciting time. You can write .NET code and you can run it anywhere you like. And that's just, just super cool. Um, so let's have a chat about what we've looked at today. So um, we've, we've uh, learned a little bit about what Maui is. And we've, we've uh, looked at the history of Maui. We've looked at the journey of, of what the original dream was for this write once, run anywhere code. We've uh, looked at the architecture, how you build uh, a Maui app. And um, we've looked at a couple of demos that I think are really cool. Um, and what we've ended up with is .NET code that just runs anywhere. .NET code that's suitable for any scenario that you want. You can use .NET for it. Um, this, by the way, is the, as I mentioned, the, the official .NET mascot. You can create these cool little um, variations uh, using mod-.NET-bot.NET official mascot, and you can create your own official customizations. You can create your .NET bot. Um, for your situation, you can run .NET for your situation anywhere that you want. Um, so I want to show you uh, a couple of resources quickly. Um, one thing that I mentioned earlier is about uh, um, the, the .NET Foundation and Microsoft uh, being open, so everything being open source. So you can actually see the Maui repo here on GitHub. Everything is being developed out in the open. So you can contribute to this if you want, and you can contribute by opening a pull request. You can contribute by uh, trying it out, posting issues, tell the team what's working, what's not working. Um, there are some cool discussions here as well. One of my favorite things about this is the wiki. Um, now in the wiki, there's the roadmap where there are, this is obviously all living documents. So they're, they're, the team are explaining here what's gonna be available when looking at the release roadmap. But what is my favorite thing about this is this status. Um, so this actually shows you the status of current controls and features in .NET MAUI. Um, so, you know, you, we can see that the pages are done, um, activity indicators done, button is has some things pending and so on and so forth. So I think that's a really cool tool to use. Um, I've also got, uh, I'll share this link with everyone. And um, this is a collection of links of all the things that I thought were interesting for today's talk. Um, 
So I've got links back to the .NET Maui repo, some of the Microsoft docs, uh, my repos for everything that I showed today, um, and uh, my blog post on the page was over. I also uh, found this cool blog post from Andrew Craven on doing uh, publishing NuGet packages with GitHub Actions, which I used uh, for my talk. Um, I'll share that. Don't worry about that link too much. I'll make sure that everyone's got that. Um, but yeah, that was that was uh, that was the resources I used. Um, I mentioned early on that I would give you guys some points for watching my talk. So thank you for sticking with me to the end. Um, hopefully it's it's been enjoyable and uh, you haven't just stuck around for the points. But either way, scan this barcode in uh, this QR code in the SSW Rewards app. You'll get 500 points and you can use those towards these cool prices. Um, last thing is that if you have any feedback, I would love to hear it. Um, if you uh, want to scan this code, it will take you to a feedback form. Uh, I'd love to hear what you feel I can improve about this talk um, or, you know, um, if you loved it, let me know as well. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear the feedback as well. Um, but thank you very much. That has been me telling you about .NET Maui. Thank you.